So look, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to talk to you today. Um, I'm delighted to be invited by Gary. I want to start off, we're here tonight talking about self-belief. And this man should be on the stage talking about self-belief. His journey with Think Network I think is amazing. I've watched it, I've observed, I've encouraged. I think he deserves a round of applause for what he's doing. And we'll all look forward to seeing that Think Network develop. I wish you all the best for that guy. So a bit about myself, um, 44 years young, up until three months ago I was in corporate employment earning a good salary. I've taken that step into self-employment and there's many entrepreneurs in this room tonight. Um, I'm only starting to realise now what you've gone through and, and the challenges and the opportunities that are proposed being self-employed, but believe me I'm loving the journey. So I want to tell you a bit about my journey that has taken me to where I am today. So I was reared in Straban, County Tyrone. If anyone knows much about Straban, it was the highest unemployment black spot in Europe. Um, I was reared there in the height of the troubles. It was a troubled town. But thankfully, um, I had good parents. We had a loving home, and I came through that okay. But being the, the town that Straban was, and the family that I had, my mum and dad worked in the local nylon factory. I had two uncles, two aunts, and a couple of cousins working in the same factory. And my, my advice to my parents will get you into the nylon factory. Good employment, stable employer. Um, and that's where I was, my program started at that point in time. I'm the eldest of five. Now that says four because the youngest one wasn't there at that point in time. But I found it really hard to find a picture with me with hair on. And there I didn't quite have my head buried in the sand as they did for some part of my career up until this last number of months. So I went to school, secondary school. I was an average student. I had plenty of potential, but I never really applied myself going through school. Went through to A-levels and being the eldest of five, I spent a lot of my time babysitting the younger siblings to the point where my younger sister called me dad because my parents were working shifts and I was changing nappies of my younger sister at the age of 15, 16. Um, but I, I left school with A-levels, went to catering college in Portrush, decided after three months, no, I don't want to do this. I want to get back. I want to get into employment, and I want to learn from the ground up. And I did that. I entered into the hospitality sector and worked in local hotels down home. And from very early age, at age, age of 19, I was managing large teams of people and starting to build my own management and leadership capabilities from, from that point of view. Now, we always talk about stages in our lives or what next moments that change the paths of our life. Um, and I'll talk you through the first one for me. And there we have it, a nice cup of tea leaves. So one evening I was working in the hotel and I was bar supervisor on that night. A Sunday evening, shift was finishing at six o'clock and there was a tea leaf convention in the function room. And my mum was coming with some friends and she came up to me and she said, you're finishing your shift shortly. Susie has pulled out. Do you want to take her place? I said, Mum, I don't believe in this crap. <laughs> you do, but I don't. But anyway, I took the seat and I sat. And it was, a, it was a fella who was doing the teacup reading. And he started off the usual. You've got four, five, sib five siblings. Four siblings, okay. Yeah, that's right. You've got an elder and if he's not well at the minute. Yeah. And then the pause happened, and he looked at his teacup, and he looked at me, and he did it again, and he said, Gregory, and back then I was known as Gregory. When I moved to Belfast, I changed my name to Greg. Um, <laughs> but he seriously said to me, and this was a young man that just turned 19 years old, I can see nothing positive in your future. There's nothing for you to look forward to. In fact, I'll give you a refund for your tea leaf reading tonight. So you can imagine, <laughs> F him. And I went and said to my mum, he's talking baloney. I, and she said, yeah, I never believed he'd, he'd leave reading anyway, <laughs> uh, which is fine. But that was my first, first what next moment. And from then, I said, there's no way that's going to happen to me. Um, so I worked hard in industry and saved some money. And, th and that started my journey then. So save for a year got enough money to get a car on the road and a few months rent advanced up and I moved to Belfast. Worked with some of the big chains in Belfast. <sighs> Managing large headcounts of people and just really honing my own management and leadership skills. 
but whilst doing that, because I, I didn't go straight to university, and I, I specifically chose I didn't want to do that, um, I started studying part-time. So I did my CIPD in personal management, part-time evening classes, and then I went on and did my degree in HNC, then degree part-time at Jordanstown. Throughout all my management career, I always had a real interest in people, in people management, but the responsibility for recruitment, for inducting people, for developing, for training, for disciplining, all fell with me because I had what was deemed to be a skill set for that. So I really wanted to drive my direction in human resource management, which is what I done. So I got a job in a retail environment. So the, the, the advert was, we want a personnel manager. Um, you'll be heading up the HR function, but you'll also be doing duty management. So that was my end right away. I had years of duty management experience. I just got my CAPD level five, and I went in, and I blagged the interview, and I got the job. So that got me in the journey that I wanted to be. Now, I continued my studies part-time, and I, whilst working as a HR manager then in a then Safeway store, I did my postgrad diploma in human resource management, and I'm done to get a distinction in the master's. All self-funded, all across six or seven years of part-time uh, employment. While all that was going on, I then got married, and Things were good. So I was in, progressed in a couple of HR jobs. Work-life balance was reasonably good. First big blip came. Um, <laughs> no, it wasn't the fact that I got married. I was married before. <laughs> the, fir the first big blip was that my, my marriage had an issue. And I knew at that point in time that that wasn't good. That came as a rocket bolt to my side. And at that point, it started, I was essentially two nights away to the marital home. We came back, we worked at it, and I went on. We had, a, we had a happy marriage for another four or five years, and my second child was born, which was good. But I always knew, as those years went on in my marriage, that it was going to end because of the thing that came and hit me like a side bolt at one point in time. And it did, but from that point in time, that start, started my steps. When I started to then think, I need to make this work for me, for my children. So I continued with my career. What next? I progressed to a very senior level within a large organization here in Northern Ireland. Um, I was managing a HR team of 20 people. It had an annual turnover of 300 million. We employed two and a half thousand people. And I was going to work. And I loved my work at 18 years, human resource management experience behind me at that point in time. But there was something in me that just wasn't sitting easy with me. I knew that with change in leadership in that organization or whatever, that the values of that organization, the poor leadership at times, the lack of autonomy to a site team, and I knew I had more to offer, more to offer industry. And whilst at stages in my career, I had always thought of becoming a consultancy. I never, ever had the courage to take the step. Um, programming from the early age, saying you must get a job, you must stay in a job, and you must earn a good salary. Anyway, I left the, the large corporate environment um, just over a year ago. I stepped into an opportunity with another business who are still remain friends of mine, but very clear I, I knew that the vision that these people had for, for their business was very different to the vision that I had, was brought in under the guys to help them with. Um, so I made a very quick decision. So now decision making for me in terms of my future sits with me. And my business, People HQ, was born. This is now three and a half months in my journey. And it's been great fun. So here I am, back in the, in the brinks of a marriage breakup, in some high pressure jobs at the time. Self-belief was low. Confidence was low. I'm a terrible overthinker, and I was back then. I was unhappy and, and very stressed. Flick forward to now, I'm a different person. Um, I stand here with self-belief. I stand here with confidence, and I'm going to make this work. A year ago, Gary asked me to talk at the very first Think Network event, and I wouldn't. I couldn't have done this a year ago. I couldn't have done it three years ago or five years ago, but I'm delighted to be standing here tonight.
So what is my journey? What have I learned from that? And what can I give us some form of advice if I'm worthy of doing so tonight? People before me have talked mindset tonight and they know a lot more about mindset than I ever will, but I'm on my journey to learn a bit more. But we all talk about the conscious and the subconscious mind and the effect that it has in our thinking and our programming. I started reading up on it and just reading up on it because I knew that I was overthinking quite a lot and I knew that the thoughts in my head were holding me back. Our subconscious mind is 30,000 times stronger than the conscious mind. What a number. So all those thoughts, all those habits, all those beliefs are just driving your brain. Your brain is such an intelligent computer. I'm sure you've all heard the saying, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. For years I thought I couldn't. So if you have something in there, start thinking that you can and things will change. Brain activity, 10% is driven in the conscious mind and 90% by the subconscious mind. Another startling figure. So you think about all those things that are driven around the conscious mind or the subconscious mind. Emotions, feeling, long-term memory, creativity. In long-term memory, from an age I was taught, I was told to get a job in an island factory, for goodness sake, in Straban. Um, <laughs> thankfully, things have changed. Another hint, relax. Um, I worked with a mentor and he was very true when he said, you'll never make a good decision under a stress state. Never. So this past year and a half, I've spent a lot more time trying to relax. And if you even think about that in the analogy of going on a holiday, so you're thinking about booking a holiday, and you book it, and you pay the deposit, and you have locked in the diary, and you almost start thinking about that holiday. You think you're there. You think you're enjoying the sun. You get to the airport on the day you're flying out, and you have the old obliterate photograph of the pint and the glass of wine and the diet cook and the coffee and it goes on social media. We're on holiday, we're going to have fun. When you go on holiday, there's a sun lounger, six packs out and you're relaxed. And when you're on holidays, you're relaxed and you're thinking about the future and the plans. And it's all really good, really good stuff. You, you start to really think good when you're in a relaxed state of mind. Then the holiday's over and you're stepping back onto your plane. You're going to work Monday morning, 6am call, I've got this to do, I've got that to do. You just start thinking back into your old habits, your old way. But, so try, the, the message is try and relax. Um, for me now, I spend a lot more time at the gym. I spend a lot more time out walking. I've got a Springer Spaniel who keeps me busy and I have two, two lovely children who keep me very busy as well. And my partner Gail is here tonight as well. And we have a lovely time. <laughs> Not in that way, thank you. Um, so excuses. I am the king of excuses. I made every excuse under the sun that held me back from doing what I wanted to do for 10 plus years. No, I can't do it. Who's going to want to work with me? I'm not confident enough. All those things. Excuses are gone now. Um, where I am today is all down to me. And where I take this is all down to me. Think results. So think where you want to go and, and results will come. When the result starts to come, it brings success. And success for me started to bring me confidence. And that natural confidence that has come through now with me launching my own business, um, more confidence brings more success. So I'm no longer standing saying, Greg Quinn, HR and recruitment consultant. It's I'm Greg Quinn, director of People HQ. I can do A, B, C and add value to your business. And yeah. I'm delighted to say that there's some of my clients in this room tonight and I'll not name anyone, um, but I know the gratitude goes out to them because they've helped me in my journey and they've given me that confidence to move forward. Clear mental image. So some of the speakers earlier talked about a vision and having a vision. I am a big advocate of that. Um, get a vision. Write it down, draw it down, share it with family. I've shared mine with Gail. She knows where we're going. Picture it. Feel it, be in the moment, feel what that feels like. Set big goals, if they're not big enough, you're never gonna reach them, you're never gonna stretch your mind to achieve those goals. But it's okay having goals, you need to make the actions to get you there from A to Z, wherever you're going. Part of my mental image, People HQ will be an established business with an office in Belfast, employing a team of, of professionals who will be able to service the whole employee life cycle. 
Myself, Gail, and my two children will have a house in the countryside. And that dog, Buddy, it's all for him. It's going to have a big running space for him because he keeps us all busy. Any advice in terms of success factors that I can give? And some of it's been touched on already here this evening. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't ever be afraid to ask for help. And I've been amazed. Um, all my career, I never knew too many entrepreneurs. And it was a greatest showman last year, and thanks to Gavin Wall for arranging that. It was then when I started meeting some of the great people in this room who had that mindset of being an entrepreneur that started to change my own mindset. And I started to ask them for help, and I'm getting the help. I'm very appreciative of that help. We talked, Gary touched on earlier on collaboration. Collaboration is essential. Building relationships is essential. Northern Ireland is so small, and we can all help each other and, and make each other's careers, businesses better. Give freely, and what I mean by that is it's not all about driving invoices all the time. Give back some of the knowledge that you have. I spend a lot of my time now talking to students. Last week I was delighted to be speaking at an event for 160 students from the agri agricultural division. Give them a simple advice on interview skills, CV writing, how to approach the job market. But that went down and was very well received. So give, give your time and add value where you can. It will come back and then you'll get the rewards at some point. Work hard. Nothing happens by not sitting back and waiting for it to come to you. Um, throughout my career, I always worked hard. I would have put in 60, 70 hours a week, but I don't necessarily do that now, but when I'm working hard, I'm working more efficient. So now I've made a conscious decision that on a Friday afternoon, if you want to get me, you'll get me when I'm doing the school pickup run, so I'm picking my two kids up from school on a Friday. Um, Friday afternoon is my coffee time with my daughter, and then I pick Nathan up from secondary school, and it's my time. And I won't change that unless it's something really big for a client. Then I'll step back in and I'll go and sort it. But generally, I can work hard. I can go out two hours and, and a coffee in a Saturday morning and I'll do a bit of work for a, a client then because I know the kids are with Gail and we're all happy. Be true to yourself. I wasn't true to myself for years. Um, I don't know how many times that I've shook hand in a deal and something inside me saying, no, just say no, just walk away. Um, so be true. Your gut tells a lot. It really does. And learn from your mistakes. There's always a positive in every single mistake that you'll make. And I've made plenty, believe me, uh, across business, across industry. But all those mistakes that I've made in work or in relationships are all to make things better going forward. And just believe. Believe in you and believe in what you can achieve. And it will come if you work hard at it. So I'll ask a question, a rhetorical question to the crowd. If you're sitting here tonight and you've got something you want to do, whether it has to do with your career, your business, your relationships, what's next for you? Think that through, write it down, get that vision. But when are you going to do it? Is it tomorrow? Next week? Next year? Do it now. Life is too short. Life is way too short. And one thing that I've learnt is that I wouldn't be standing here today only for my own drive, my own self-belief. And there's certainly, there's no cavalry coming to help you. There's no one come to, to come to help me at the time. Unless I drove forward, then the help started to come, but there's definitely no cavalry coming. So make it happen for you. Be you and believe in yourself. You have it within you to do it. I'm Greg Quinn, director and founder of People HQ. Thank you.